Arkansas. Well, Governor, <laughs> I thank you for coming here tonight, and my first question is, how are you? It's great to have you here. I mean that sincerely. He came in this afternoon, first time we met in the studio, and he walked up to me and says, here's your human punching bag. <laughs> I thought it was great that you said you'd come on the show. I was glad to be asked. Well, <laughs> you want it? <laughs> now, first of all, you've got some great supporters. Now, we must have received how many letters the past few days? 171. 171 letters from your supporters. And they all said something about like this. This was addressed to me. It's from a Sharon rector, I probably in Little Rock. And she said, Dear Johnny, Bill Clinton laid one egg while you've laid enough to start a chicken farm. <laughs> We love you, and we still love the guy. Don't kick a man when he's down. So you've got a lot of support. Right. Now, what happened there? I watched the speech, um, and as a performer, I kind of felt for you in a way. What, what, what happened? What was... Well, it was a good idea that didn't work. What can I tell you? <laughs> I, uh, you know, everybody, in, at least at home, knows I can give a speech. Now everybody knows I can blow one. <laughs> Yeah, but you were known as uh, somebody who was going to electrify the crowd, and it was supposed to go, what, 15, 15 minutes or something? Yeah, tw well, he had 20 minutes set aside for it, and it lasted about 32. Yeah. What? Uh... <laughs> we had a lot of uh, crowd response, you know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I noticed. It just didn't work. I mean, I don't know. What can I tell you? I, I really, my, my sole goal was achieved, however. I wanted so badly to make Michael Dukakis look great, and I succeeded beyond my wildest expectations. <laughs> He called me two days ago. Yeah. And he said he thought the speech was great, everything was forgiven, and would I please nominate Bush in New Orleans next? <laughs> I mean, he's happy, I'm happy. When you when did you first uh, realize that things were not exactly going the way you'd planned? I mean, uh, outside of when they got the rope. I mean. <laughs> well, I was up there about three minutes. Yeah. And they were still cheering, you know, all my one-liners were getting good applause. Yeah. But I thought to myself, my God, I'm supposed to give a television speech that we had timed in 17 minutes. And I thought, the lights are never coming down, the delegates are never toned down, and I'm stuck. <laughs> so I just sort of fell on my own sword. You know, <laughs> there was nothing else to do. Yeah, and the trouble is when you bring the, most audiences do not like it when the lights are on in an auditorium. Yeah. That's why the theaters are dark and nightclubs are telling People feel more secure and comfortable. When the lights are up, they get a little... Uh, well, especially there. that night was an unusual night. You know, they had uh, waited for two and a half days, really, yeah. to get into the Dukakis nomination, and and uh, they were restless. And it just one of those things. It didn't work. Yeah. The, now the press kind of jumped on you pretty good. Uh, you think unfairly or what? I, I made a series, well, I, of, series of jokes, as you know, the next night. I thought the <laughs> which you took in pretty good. I loved them. Yeah. <laughs> one of them, I fell out of the chair when I heard them. I well, the truth is. That I did it on purpose. I've always wanted to be on this show in the worst way. I understand as a performer who has had that same situation that we all have had it. it uh, I felt like I was up there myself. Every performer who sees somebody else working gets that awful feeling. Did you, did you ever at any moment think maybe I'll cut something here? Or maybe I'll shorten this down a little? Well, if if it had been my deal entirely, what yeah. I would have done is, uh, once I saw that the lights weren't coming down, I'd have given a five-minute stump speech, right. a little hallelujah whoop to do, and got off. Right. But the problem was that I thought I'd been asked to fulfill a mission. The idea of the speech, which I blew so badly, was that there'd be millions of people watching who knew nothing or not very much about Dukakis. Right. And somebody who'd worked with him, been his friend, should put out what the election ought to be all about, why he should be elected. And... Uh, like I said, I, I did what I meant to do. I made him look awful good <laughs> the next night, but I, it just didn't work. And so I, that's why I didn't quit in five minutes. The, the, and then, what can I tell you? It went from bad to worse. Yeah. What kind of reaction did you get from the people in Arkansas? Obviously, it was more, more support. Really. I, I have to tell you that it sounds 
it may be hard for you to believe, this has been one of the most wonderful weeks of my life. Really? Yeah. <laughs> because when, when I went home, after a couple of the networks got on me so hard, you know, and uh, I was being banged around, the people of the state thought that I was in an impossible situation, knew that the speech had basically been approved, and that I went out there and, and uh, did the best I could, and they just reached out and kind of embraced me. It's been, it's been an incredible week. Uh, just because they've been so good to me. Isn't that strange how something like it's that a wonder, I swing you, around? I always tell people that I, I have the best job in the country and I represent the most wonderful people in the country. But, you know, I was down. They could have said, well, he embarrassed us. And he didn't. Instead, they said, you did the best you could. We're proud of you and we're with you. Every place I've gone, it's been it's been an absolutely incredible week. I'll tell you what worked for you. You've got a sense of humor. And that probably is one of the great saving graces of people who are in public office because a lot of them don't have a sense of humor. You could have turned around and said, gee, they're, they're hammering on me and Carson is zinging me with all these jokes. And you turn around and you show up here. That's, that's to your credit. That's, that's great. We're coming right back to talk to Governor Clinton, so stay where you are. We'll be right back. One question about uh, dem uh, not only Democratic convention, but a Republican political event. You think they go too long? The networks uh, found this time that uh, a lot of people weren't watching as much as they had before. Whether the process is too strung out, or do you think it's a release for the delegates? Of I think hard? one reason people don't watch it as much is that everybody knows what the outcome is. Yeah. You know, because of the primaries. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of discussion now about whether the the whole format should be changed. I mean, one of the reasons that we got in the fix we were in is that the crowd wanted to go ahead and nominate Dukakis, because that's the one thing they got to do that had the official uh, stamp of meaning on it. Right. And yet, I was asked to do something to basically get another television message on so there'd be four nights of TV message. Right. And it was a dissonant thing. So I, I think that as long as there's nothing left to be decided at a convention, maybe we need to think about what else we put on. I do believe that the networks, even if they have low ratings, should give over four nights every four years to a civics lesson. I think it's important, but yeah. maybe we should work with them and figure out what we put on. We tighten it up maybe a yeah. little bit. No yeah. more windbags. Yeah. <laughs> Did somebody say that? Uh, you're governor now of Arkansas until uh, 1991? That's right. Yeah. Where are you looking beyond that, politically, or are you? Depends on how I do on the show tonight. <laughs> Would you entertain uh, uh, along the line sometime of running for higher office, uh, vice president? I'd like to do it sometime, but I, I decided not to go this time because I really felt that I hadn't fulfilled my commitment to my state and because... Oh, my wife and I only have one child. She's only seven, and it's not good for a kid that young to be yeah. left alone, you know, for long periods of time. So we decided that uh, we'd wait and uh, till my daughter was old enough to uh, kind of abuse me with the same facility that you do, you know, so she could live with her, <laughs> her political life. Okay. Now, we found something else about you, uh, about you. We didn't, I didn't know, that you um, played the saxophone yeah. and, and played it since, I guess, you were about nine years old. You told me you haven't played it a lot recently, but occasionally you get with a group. And the last couple of years I've played, you know, a handful of times. And we thought we don't, you know, get a chance to get uh, political figures on the show to entertain. And we asked, we asked the governor, I don't want you to think this is kind of a surprise, that we're kind of sandbagging him in here. And you said, yeah, you might. And you talk with Doc, and I understand maybe you might do a little something for us. You do tenor sax, you play, right? We're going to play a short song. <laughs> See if we can, uh, now that I've messed up in voice, we're going to see if I can mess up in song. You know, it's, I don't it's think sort so. Of a multimedia. It's all yours. Thanks. Go ahead and hey, Gov, you got enough air to blow this thing? <laughs> no, I used up my quota in Atlanta. Okay. Thank you. 
got some good chops there. Yeah. Isn't it nice to hear that kind of reaction in the middle of music applause? <laughs> I'd almost forgotten the sound of it. it not <laughs> now, does this mean we have to offer a Republican governor equal time musically? We might have to do that, but they have to play as well as Bill. Okay, then we'll put out the opera. That was dynamite. Can Only if they crash and burn in New Orleans. <laughs> Can you, say, you want to stay and listen to Joe Conker? Can I stay and then I'll walk off after that? I don't would want, you, would you, you know me, I don't want to overstay my time. <laughs> oh, you made up for it. I love Joe Cocker. If I can stay in here and sing, I like you. You sure can. We'll be right back with Joe Cocker. <laughs>